In this uh, video, we will talk about pituitary gland, its structure and the hormones which it secretes. First, let us talk about the anatomical part of the gland. That is, what is it developed from, from which part has it arised. Pituitary is divided into two main parts and these two main parts are adenohypophysis and the other one is known as neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis is formed by a pharyngeal outgrowth. So it develops from develops from an outgrowth of pharynx which is known as pharyngeal outgrowth. This outgrowth is known as Rathke's pouch. This Rathke's pouch, it has three parts. First part is known as pars distalis. Second is known as pars tuberellis. And third is known as pars intermedia. Out of these three parts, two, that is pars distalis and pars tuberellis join to form the anterior lobe of pituitary gland and pars intermedia it forms the intermediate or the middle lobe of pituitary. That means this adenohypophysis which is the anterior lobe of pituitary is developed from the pharyngeal outgrowth. Neurohypophysis it is developed from an extension of hypothalamus. Develops from extension of hypothalamus. And this is known as pars nervosa. So pars nervosa gives rise to the posterior lobe of pituitary and that is why when we say that the gland has developed from which part one part major that is anterior lobe it is from pharyngeal outgrowth and the other part comes from the extension of the hypothalamus and the technical terms which are given to these parts the pharyngeal growth is known as Rathke's pouch and it has three areas of parts. Pars distalis and tuberellus make anterior lobe. Intermedia makes the intermediate or the middle lobe. And the pars nervosa part which is the extension of formed by the extension of hypothalamus gives rise to the posterior lobe of pituitary. It is a very tiny gland which is hanging from the lower side of the brain. Now, once we have understood from where it develops, we will draw a small simple structure showing anterior posterior lobe of pituitary and we will also see the connection, how it is connected with the hypothalamus and then we will come to why is it known as the master gland and we will see its hormones. The diagram of pituitary, we will draw it in a simple manner so that we understand all the parts. This part which I have shown here is the anterior lobe of pituitary and this is the posterior lobe of pituitary. So let us first label this part anterior lobe of pituitary and this is the posterior lobe. In between these two lobes there is the intermediate lobe. So here we draw a small area which is the intermediate lobe. And we said that it is attached from the lower side of the 
brain to the hypothalamus. So from hypothalamus, there's an extension to which this pituitary is attached to. So this part, this upper part here is the hypothalamus region. In the hypothalamus region, there are neurosecretory cells and these neurosecretory cells are nothing but neurons. So we will show these neurons. Let me raise this here and shift this side. So let us draw these neurons. These are, I'm just showing it by this manner so that we just have the, them represented here. These are the neurosecretory cells, that is the neurons. And this extension which we have drawn is the exon part. Similarly, there are these neurosecretory cells here also. This is the hypothalamus part that we are showing, this one. So here we would write these are neuro secretory cells and the long processes of these cells are the exons. Now what happens in case of hypothalamus and anterior lobe of pituitary? Here there is a blood vessel which goes in. This blood vessel divides into a set of capillaries. These capillaries reunite and this blood vessel enters the anterior lobe of pituitary. This blood vessel is known as hypophyseal portal vein. And now it is going to break into a set of capillaries again. This is the second set of capillaries which is formed. And when this blood leaves, anterior lobe of pituitary, from here the hormones are released. So now what has happened here is the neurohormones are produced by these neurosecretory cells. These hormones are poured into blood. These neurohormones which we have seen that they could be releasing factors or inhibitory factors they are poured into this circulation. So let us write, we are writing these releasing factors. So these hormones through a hypophysial system enter into the pituitary gland. They start stimulating pituitary, anterior lobe of pituitary and pituitary secretes the hormones and these hormones which are called the trophic hormones the hormones of anterior lobe of pituitary get secreted. That means the releasing factors or inhibiting factors from hypothalamus are brought to anterior lobe of pituitary through hypophysial portal system. These hormones stimulate pituitary. Now pituitary secretes these tropic hormones. These hormones are again poured into blood and through blood they would reach the target organs. So connection between hypothalamus and anterior lobe of pituitary is through hypophysial portal way and this system is known as hypophysial portal system. Now let us come to the other lobe that is posterior lobe. Posterior lobe here these neurosecretory cells they produce, or let me make these exons a little longer so that they can reach up to this part. They secrete the hormones like oxytocin and vasopressin. And these hormones are here secreted by the neurosecretory cells and the hormones remain in the exon. They remain stored in the exon. Now, when the blood vessel when the blood vessel enters here and comes out, again there is a set of capillaries. So these hormones which are synthesized by the neurosecretory cells, they come into the blood circulation and they are released from here. And that is why we use two words. We said these hormones like oxytocin and ADH, they are synthesized by the neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus, but they are released, they come out through the posterior lobe of 
pituitary. So here this oxytocin and ADH get secreted and they are synthesized in the neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus. So both the glands or both the lobes of pituitary that is anterior as well as posterior they are connected to hypothalamus and the connection is different. Anterior lobe hypothalamus connection is through hypophyseal portal system and posterior lobe hypothalamus connection is only through the exons of neurosecretory cells. So basically the hormones which are produced by the pituitary gland they are in response to the neurohormones produced by the hypothalamus. That means pituitary gland actually executes the job which is to be done by the instructions of hypothalamus. Let us take an example. We have talked of a thyroid stimulating hormone releasing factor. So this thyroid stimulating hormone releasing factor, it is produced by the hypothalamus. This releasing factor comes to anterior lobe of pituitary. So this releasing factor is here. This releasing factor is going to stimulate pituitary to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone and now pituitary would release that thyroid stimulating hormone which is going to stimulate thyroid gland. So thyroid gland gets stimulated by TSH secreted from the anterior lobe but this TSH is secreted in response to the releasing factor which was produced by the hypothalamus. So what exactly pituitary is doing is execution of the instruction which is coming from hypothalamus. But it regulates other endocrine glands and that is why pituitary gland is known as the master gland and the hormones of anterior lobe of pituitary because they stimulate other endocrine glands are known as trophic hormones. Now later after this we would talk of the hormones that is the trophic hormones various types of hormones we will see the hormones of anterior lobe of pituitary their action and the posterior lobe of pituitary and their action.